Hi folks, welcome back. And as always, thanks for joining. So today we're going to talk about how to color your wax. And uh, as you can see, I've uh, been busy and I've uh, taken some soy wax that I have on hand and I've played around a little bit and uh, ended up uh, coloring some wax. But then I went farther and I made a couple of candles. Now this candle here, I used a layering technique and I made a landscape pattern similar to what you would see in sand art and with undulating patterns. And I'm going to show you how to make that today. Now, I also went ahead and I, uh, I made an embed here. This is a wax insert that you can put in your candles. And I'm going to show you how to make all of that. But first, you're going to have to let me yammer on a bit about uh, what uh, color is, uh, talk about the dyes, how to troubleshoot problems that you may be experiencing. Uh, we're going to discuss visual appeal which is very important as a candle maker and getting the customer to pick up your candle. And I'm going to share some tips and tricks. And then at the end, I'm going to show you how I made these. All right, a lot to cover. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the dyes. Now, the dyes uh, formulated for uh, candles are typically a pigment, it's a powder, and it has been um, put into a carrier that helps it disperse into the wax. And uh, as you can see from the video, uh, this is the result of something that I dyed. I'm pointing out the red because in the video itself it didn't look that strong, but once it uh, sets up, well, you're going to get a stronger result than what you first uh, saw while it was uh, soft and still wet. Now just a couple of notes on uh, the pigment dyes that uh, we're going to use in our uh, wax. Uh, pigment, it's not really well suited for uh, capillary flow. It's a, it's a very a pigment, it's a granular, albeit very small, but it can, if you use a lot, plug up your wick. Now, traditionally, in my experience, colors that are hard to select a wick for are the, the reds, the greens, and the blacks, if they're very strong colors. So now the next point is you want your color to make sense to the scent of your candle. And this is the visual appeal. They have to match to the brain uh, what that means. Uh, you don't want to make a purple candle and scent it with an apple scent. It just doesn't make sense to the brain. Uh, purple is grape, red is apple. These are traditional. People understand that and they can expect that. So uh, make sure that your colors visually identify with your candle scent. Okay, and now a couple of the tricks. Well, I make plugs whenever possible and that speeds up the candle making process. It avoids a lot of uh, pitfalls that you'll find along the way. Uh, it reduces the chances of shrinkage because what you add over is a smaller volume. Um, you can save yourself a little money on scent by not scenting the plug. You can save yourself a little money by not coloring your plug as well. Okay, so enough with the techie stuff. Let's go on to having some fun and I'm going to move the camera over and we're going to make this stuff. All righty. All right, so now for the all important let's have fun segment of the video. And uh, I'm going to color some wax and uh, we're going to make some sand art candles. And what I have laid out here are some of the things that I'm going to be using. Now, of course, I'm melting my wax in a double boiler. And I have a uh, small double boiler set up here for uh, making small amounts of colored wax. So I've got some uh, glass containers. I've got some stainless steel rings. Now, I use these for uh, many things, basically the same purpose, though, and that is to pour stuff in there, pull off the ring. And then, of course, my little disc I can cut into any shape that I like. And uh, 
a template for cutting additional shapes as a guide, uh, a ruler, and of course the all-important X-Acto knife. Now, uh, while we're doing this, of course, I'm going to go ahead and make our color chart. And I'm going to pick uh, the color red. And what I have here is a little piece of paper that I use as sort of like a, a, uh, a guide or a legend that I can refer to from time to time. And I'll show you how to uh, go up in uh, your uh, darknesses. Uh, now, this is a trick that I'm going to use while I'm making my uh, sand art candles. So I'm going to explain that when the time comes. Okay, so let's get started by moving the camera overhead so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So what I have here is uh, my list, my build list for the candles that I'm going to be making where I have exactly what I'm going to be doing, what colors they are, and uh, this is a build list for candles. It's something you can do yourself. Now, while I am uh, working on my very first color, the red, to pour into this ring to cut to make inserts for my candle what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take the opportunity while I have melted wax and dyes everything in my hand to develop my uh, color chart legend that I can tuck away and refer to uh, whenever I need some of the information that I'm going to be recording of course is the color it's a dye what company I bought it from, the date I purchased, and the same thing for the wax, what kind of wax it is, the company, date of purchase, and then a little chart right here where I'm going to put little drops of the colored wax once I have it. Zero is for no dye, and one will be, because this is a powdered pigment, I'm going to use a little toothpick and meter it like that, where this will be one dip into the dye, and uh, subsequent identical dips along the way and uh, develop the uh, colors here and tuck it away. So what I've done already is I have uh, transferred 50 grams of uh, soy wax into this pot and I'm going to begin adding the dye to it one at a time while I get two colors that I like. So the first thing I want to do, of course, is zero. So let's just do a little. Drop of zero here. OK. That will become part of the legend. And now I'm going to scoop up just a little bit of dye here. Okay, and if you can see that, that will be one. And drop that in there. And for each subsequent drop, I'm going to put on here. When I get to a color that I like, of course, I'm going to pour myself a little disc so I can start making some art. Well, it looks like eight scoops with the toothpick into the dye is right where I want to be for my color right there. So I'm going to pour here into my little disc. And uh, I have this as a reference from now on. So it was worth taking the time to develop the color chart as we go along here. I just pour a little bit out. And I'm pouring straight onto a Teflon sheet. I'm holding it down just a little bit to get a skin. And then I can let go. And now for the green. And as I go along, of course, I will continue to build my uh, color chart for green. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could put this entire bottle here. This is a measured portion here and to a pound of wax. And what you would end up with is a 3% concentration in a pound of wax. I uh, don't want to do that because I'm mixing very small batches. And from time to time, I may change the wax. And two scoops seems to be plenty for the green. Now, even one was uh, rather dark. So if you want your green to be uh, lighter, uh, then what you would have to do is, of course, start with uh, more wax, because one scoop gave you that. And two is a very dark green, just where I want to be. So I'm going to pour my little disc now. And then we're going to continue to do this to make my different colors. For this, I wanted to make gold, so I've uh, mixed a custom color here. I've used a uh, three uh, scoops of the yellow and uh, one scoop of the red to make gold. So that's plain yellow and then we add a little bit of red to get gold and it's ready to pour now. All right, so now I've made my basic colors and I have my legends that I can refer to to make them again. I'm going to set those aside. Now with the red and the gold, I'm going to uh, cut my little wax inserts and uh, with the blue and the green, I'm going to cut other inserts, but I'm going to take a little bit of this to make a sea foam green and with this I'm going to make a little bit take a little bit and make a sky blue as well. What I have here is um, the candle that I will be making today and uh, the first layer is going to be just white like sand so we're going to pour that first. Now to do that I have a little trick up my sleeve and what I'd like to do is tilt it just a little bit and I'm going to pour rather cold and this is a by eye because what we're doing is creating art so it's up to you how much to pour in but what I'm going to do is pour to right about there and stop and that's my first layer. While I'm waiting for that to firm up, I'm going to go ahead and make my sky blue. Okay, so my next layer is ready. It's the uh, green. And before I do that, though, I'm going to um, make a little uh, pattern in the wax. And I'm going to turn it this way so that you can see and something that you can do very easily to give interest to your layers is to and this is will be to great effect because this is a seascape so this will be the sand and I'm just gouging down the side here to cut a little trough with a flat sided stick and I'm going to clean that up a little bit but you will see it uh, show up very nicely once I pour the next layer that I have ready here. And now uh, we're ready for a little bit of the green. Now I'm, me, I'm pouring just a little bit in there and uh, you'll see why uh, in a little bit. That's going to take a good bit of cleanup. Starfish, surprise. And then we'll pour the rest of the ocean. And before it sets up, we're going to add us a little fish to go for a swim. 
There we are. I wanted to uh, make some ocean waves in my sea here at this level right here. So we can make small waves, something like this. Or perhaps bigger waves. And uh, we can also make really big waves. So that's what I'm going to do before I pour my sky. So now that I have the general shape of my waves, I can clean them up a little bit, uh, smoosh the wax down a little bit uh, with a paper towel, and then finish it off with a hair dryer. Just enough to smooth it down a little bit. You don't want to melt too much because it will just fill up what you just took out. So now that I'm going to I'll let that set up for just a second, and then I am going to pour my sky, and I'm going to pour it in several different layers because what I'm going to do is, of course, put in some clouds. So let's pour this. And we'll wait a little bit and add some clouds. Something like this in a few minutes. All right, so let's uh, add a cloud, maybe two, and uh, then we're going to pour another layer and continue to do this until we get to the top. There we are. There's one cloud. Pour a layer. Wait for it to firm up and repeat until we've finished the candle. All right, so I've added the, uh, the clouds and I'm going to let this cool now. This is our seaside candle. And while I was making this, I uh, was also making another kind of a candle. And I want to show you what I've done here is I've uh, made some wax uh, figures and I have uh, stuck them with a little bit of heat to the sides of the glass so that we're going to use our wax embeds like this. And for this one, I'm simply going to pour plain white wax and I'm going to pour slowly and a little bit at a time because I don't want my uh, appliques to uh, come loose from the sides of the jar while the wax is cooling. So I'm going to pour this just a little bit in stages as well. All right, so there we have it, color and how to use it to great effect to draw your customer in because it is the first sensory perception that your customer will have to your product. All right, now, if this has been helpful, well, there's a little green ball that's gonna pop up and you can click that and go to my main channel. And from there, you can see other videos related to candle making and I hope they've been helpful. And while you're there, I have other subjects as well, arts and crafts to name one more. Um, thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>